at 12, I, we had a project and it was Mr. Jones's class. Shout out to Disney magnet school. And we had a project from Mr. Jones and we all had to either create a show. I don't really remember what the details of it was, but I remember when it was my turn to perform or, you know, kind of put on this skit. It literally was because Oprah was a big deal in Chicago, obviously. And I grew up watching that. She's like, you know, hometown Harpo studios was on the West side of Chicago. Uh, and, and it was my turn to kind of do the, the exercise and my skit was cre recreating like the Oprah set. And so I was the host and I had people that I was interviewing and it was like a whole TV set, but this was 12 years old. Right. And so for me to be live in a studio being interviewed by two people, uh, which were the lovely folks at Chicago Today, uh, NBC's Chicago Today, uh, Matt Rodriguez and Courtney Hall uh, was a huge deal for my little 12 year old girl. So I was super giddy. I was obviously super nervous. And, you know, a lot of times people have asked, uh, how do you calm your nervous system or your nerves down when you're about to go on stage? and or give a talk or give a lecture and you know i think that we all can channel or shift the energy of what we're feeling because you know if if it's something that you obviously are not seasoned at there is going to be some nervousness right it's because you care and you've obviously heard about this uh nerves also trigger the same response that excitement does in the body and, and once we are able to shift it from a sense of, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, am I going to make a mistake? Am I going to fall on stage? Am I going to say the wrong things? Am I going to freeze? Once we get past those things and start shifting it to, and this is basically, you know, what I've been able to do or how, how I've been able to channel my most nervous moments into a grounding practice that I have that I actually talk about in my book in that suck now what, but also if we are able to shift that to what is that person going to, if that one person is watching or that one person is listening, what are they going to benefit? How are they going to benefit? And just visualize them, visualize them in the audience, visualize them watching you give that talk or whatever, but have that person in your mind. And that's how I've been able to shift my nerves and calm them down so that it is conversational. So that is that composed confidence. So don't get me wrong. I was totally nervous, but to be able to anchor myself and have some of these phrases and tools that I've been talking about with you all on the brave table to be brave, to suck at something new. Like I knew I wasn't going to be as seasoned as somebody that's been doing this. This is their career for a really long time. But I know that with every single time I am sharing something in an interview, sharing something that's important, sharing something because in my heart, in my gut, in what I believe in, I want that to land with at least one person that is the person that I am anchoring or I'm holding on to. Yet also my mantra in this season is that sucked, now what? So if I say that sucked, now what? It's almost that reminder that, okay, it's not a, the biggest deal in the world if you say something that, you know, or you fumble your words or, you know, everything out of your mouth isn't, uh, you know, completely perfect because there's no ideal of that. Right. And this is just coming from somebody who is a recovering perfectionist. So before we start today's conversation and topic, so first of all, it's been so great to be back in my hometown city. It's great because I feel like I come here at least once a year, if not twice a year. And this time I came with my son and he's four now. And so it's great to just see his perspective and lens of the world and, and to, you know, start building those moments with him has just been really fun. 
even though I have been so slammed. And it's interesting because as we are diving into the holiday season, when we are going to be seeing family members, spending time with uh, and visiting loved ones that we probably only see once or maybe twice a year, or you know, maybe some of you just choose not to spend time with them. I want to set the tone and the stage for, I guess, some of the conversations that I've been asked to talk about on a lot of media outlets recently is how to have difficult conversations. And, you know, if you're in the U.S., what's been coming up is we've had elections, we've had very, you know, dis- divisive political viewpoints, super right, super left. And even, you know, in the last few years, it's been tough to state something that you believe in without upsetting somebody's feelings or walking on eggshells because you know that a fight is going to come off. But I feel like we've lost the art of being able to agree to disagree respectfully. And I felt like today's episodes should really reflect how to, if you are going to be brave to bring those tough conversations up, how to have those tough conversations. And maybe there are times where maybe we don't have those conversations, but what are those variables? And can you be that way shower for your family? See you next time at The Brave Table.